Hi everyone! Um, if you've been following my channel, you'd know that I've recently made quite a few animations for our favorite Geo Daddy Jung Lee, and I noticed that a lot of people didn't know who this lady was, and um, sometimes confused her for the god of salt, Havria, who is mentioned in Jung Lee's story quest. So this lady in question is in fact not Havria, but Gui Zhong, who is only mentioned three times in passing during the main storyline, and most of the lore about her is hidden in books and stone tablets around the Yue. Of course, being the Zhongli simp that I am, I couldn't just sit by and let everyone go around without knowing about the tragic tale of Gui Zhong. She's a huge part of Zhongli's past during his time as Morax of the Archon War, and she also hugely influenced the person that he is today. So I've gone ahead and compiled every single piece of relevant information from the books, um, the quests, the item tooltips, uh, and the wiki, and today I'm here to shed some light on the goddess of dust, Guizhong. Please note that while I do make some inferences in this video, I've also made absolutely sure to include said evidence in the video so that you can draw your own conclusions as well. And if you have any other theories about Gui Zhong, about Zhong Li, um, let me know in the comments and please consider joining the Genshin Impact lore subreddit in the description below. I am the creator of the subreddit and I'm trying very hard to maintain it. Um, so thank you and let's get started. To understand Gui Zhong, we must first understand our favorite local funeral parlor consultant, the CEO of Jiyo, Zhong Li. The 1.1 Archon quest revealed that Zhong Li is in fact the Jiyo Archon of Li Yue, Morax, or as the people of Li Yue respectfully call him, Rex Lapis. Morax has many titles, the Lord of Jiyo, the God of History, the God of Wealth and Commerce, Jiyo Daddy, the god of prosperity, and the prime adepti, to name a few, but thousands of years ago, he was namely known as the god of war. This is no surprise, given his accomplishments during the Archon War, which includes sealing a sile and many other rival gods under his meteoric stone spears at Guyun Stone Forest. Today, we know Zhong Li as a gentle, kind, and arguably intelligent consultant who actively interacts with the people of Li Yue, uh, helping those in need, and is generally a respected member of the community. However, it is heavily implied that Zhong Li, during his time as Morax in the Archon War, is nothing like the Zhong Li whom we meet during our adventures in Li Yue. There's a lot of evidence pointing to the fact that Morax was a warmongering, brutal god, unempathetic towards humans, and maybe even considering them insignificant. The most clear-cut evidence of this comes from Venti, the only other surviving victor of the Archon War and one of Zhong Li's closest and oldest associates. Venti refers to Morax as a brutish, blundering buffoon. Now this can be taken as friendly banter because Zhong Li has quite a lot to say about Venti as well. That drunkard is a disgrace to the arts. However, in the original Chinese voice lines, Venti actually calls Zhong Li a Xinaojin, which quite literally means a stubborn, blockheaded, or dead-brained individual who cannot understand human emotions. Uh, in my opinion, this is a pretty straightforward reading of Zhong Li's character during the war, which implies that he was pretty cut off from the humans and may have been an emotionless, brutish, um, somewhat more stupid than today individual. More evidence points to this in the Mask of Solitude Basalt's lore, uh, which uh, is the circlet or the hat of the archaic Petra artifact set. It states that Rex Lapis was a god of boundless slaughter who could never be described as gentle and who killed even former friends mercilessly while keeping a stone cold expression when needed to fulfill a contract. So what all of this tells us is that Zhong Li seems to have been a very 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 different uh, person from the person we know today 
or even the person he was when he founded Li Yue Harbor. Today, we see that he has a soft spot for humans. Uh, in his character tales, he helps a destitute man pay off his wife's medical bills, and we see from the book Rex Incognito and even the Archon Quest itself that Rex Lapis mingled a lot with the humans, giving them encouragement and praise. So what changed Morax from being an unfeeling, cruel god into the himbo we all know and love today? The answer is Guizhong, the goddess of dust. We learn about Guizhong in the main storyline, Firstly, from the Guizhong Ballista questline, where we sent to fix the ballista to haunt a cocoa goat for our lovely Titi. We learn from this that Guizhong was an adeptus who dedicated her creations to protecting the humans of Li Yue. We can also surmise that she was a skilled engineer and was highly respected among the adepti, considering that Cloud Retainer is especially proud that Guizhong, along with Rex Lapis, had praised her. The Guizhong Ballista then plays another vital role in the story as Cloud Retainer and Ningguang combine forces to recreate and upgrade the Ballista in the battle against Asile, using these Ballistas to ultimately wound Asile enough to be taken down by the Jade Palace. Unfortunately, that is the extent to which Guizhong is introduced in the main storyline as of 1.2. However, one side quest in question, the Treasure Lost Treasure Found World Quest, is a treasure trove of information about Guizhong. Now, this quest appears to us very early on in the story, meaning that many players, myself included, may not have fully understood the lore behind this quest or even really knew who Rex Lapis was back then. This quest starts with the historian, Soraya, asking for our help in investigating Guili Plains, a once prosperous civilization that was mysteriously wiped out. As we help her find stone tablets around the plains, we learn a few things. Guili Plains, once known as Guili Assembly, was ruled over by Guizhong, the goddess of dust. She was later joined by the god of Geo, Rex Lapis, whom we also know today as Zhongli. They combined their followers and ruled jointly over Guili Assembly, which was named after a combination of their two names, the Gui from Guizhong and the Li from Zhongli. Incidentally, this is also how many players were able to predict that Zhongli was the Geo Archon even before the 1.1 update. These two gods were best friends, which surprised Soraya, as most gods during the Archon War couldn't stand to even coexist with each other. Guizhong was a gentle and kind god who laid down the following four commandments for her people to prosper peacefully. However, the peace did not last. The stone tablets depict a battle in Guili Assembly where, and I quote, they fought upon the Guili Plains, where black dust choked the heavens and a thousand rocks splintered. Shortly after this battle, Guili Assembly was wiped out. Uh, the next section will elaborate a little bit more on this. Soraya does comment on the fall of Guili Assembly, uh, mentioning twice that it was very odd that any kind of outside force or god could have brought down the combined strength of Rex Lapis and Guizhong. Again, a little bit more on this in a later section. At the end of the quest, Soraya laments on how it was a shame that the gentle and kind gods are the ones who did not survive the Archon War, possibly foreshadowing uh, the story of Havria, which we learn in Zhongli's story quest. She also notes that someone who cared about Guizhong very much must have hidden her commandments on the tablets for future generations to find. Oh, Zhongli! The next source of information about Guizhong is a book that you can find in Mondstadt's library, The Stone Tablet Compilations, Volume 1. The book confirms that Guizhong built the Guizhong Ballista to guard the humans. 
she taught the humans how to tend the soil and directly contributed to the agricultural prosperity of early Liyue. The Archon War came around and ravaged the civilization despite the Adeptai's best efforts to protect it. Guizhong dies in the battle that causes Guili Assembly to fall, and Rex Lapis brings the survivors south of Mount Tianheng and forms what is known today as Liyue Harbor. The final source of information about Guizhong stems from the description of the five-star catalyst, Memories of Dust. It essentially depicts Guizhong and Rex Lapis's first meeting, as well as their last words to each other. We learned that Guizhong gave the Memories of Dust item to Zhongli as a sign of her loyalty as well as a challenge to him. She claims that it contains all of her knowledge and challenges Zhongli to open it. It's worth noting at this point that he is confused about her words and actions only because there was no contract driving them, further implying that Zhongli back then was a little bit of a blockhead it's implied that these are Guizhong's first words to Zhongli. She laments on how small and fragile the humans are, but also commends the fact that it is this fear that drives them to better themselves in terms of intelligence and wisdom. She notes that as a weak goddess, she can relate to this. She also confirms that Zhongli was the bronze of the relationship and that she was the brains, and that together, they made a fearsome force to be contended with. Zhongli and Guizhong meet for the first time in the glazed lily fields of Dihua Marsh, but tragically also part ways forever amidst them. Her last words to Zhongli plead with him to forget about memories of dust, but she dies before she can finish the sentence. Zhongli tries to unlock the item for the next few millennia, but to this day has not succeeded. Eventually, the glazed lilies that were so special to Guizhong and Zhongli also slowly died out. From all the information we have gathered, we can summarize the following. Guizhong was an intelligent, kind, and gentle, but weak goddess who ruled over Guili Plains. She was joined by Rex Lapis, who we know as Zhongli, and the two gods became best friends. This was unheard of during the Archon War, where the gods could barely stand being in the presence of each other usually. In their relationship or friendship, Guizhong is the brains while Zhongli is the muscle. Guizhong uses her engineering prowess to create machines to protect the humans during the war. Guizhong tries to get the blockheaded Zhongli to understand the humans, who, despite their fragility, work hard to overcome their weaknesses. The glazed lily fields seemed to be special to the two gods, as many of their meetings occurred there. Guizhong gives Zhongli a locked memories of dust puzzle that contains all of her knowledge, challenging him to open it. Sometime during the war, a battle at Guili Assembly kills Guizhong and renders the area inhabitable. Zhongli is by Guizhong's side when she dies. Her last words tell him to forget about the stone dumbbell, Memories of Dust, but she dies before she can finish her sentence. Zhongli continues trying to open the Memories of Dust, but fails even to this day. After Guizhong's death, Zhongli takes the survivors south and establishes Liyue Harbor as we know today. Currently, there is no canon explanation as to how Guizhong died. All we know is that she was involved in a huge fight, died with Zhongli by her side, and that her death destroyed Guili Plains. The general consensus at the moment in the community is that she and Zhongli fought against a third god and that she was killed in the battle. However, given the evidence provided, I actually strongly believe that Zhongli is the one who killed her, I won't go too far into things because we'll be here for hours if I get started, but you can read up on my full-length explanation on the Genshin lore subreddit linked below. Essentially, I believe that Guizhong was corrupted during this time and that Zhongli had no choice but to kill her, most likely because they had previously made a contract for him to do so if she ever got compromised. 
This is because of the following pieces of evidence. The Archaic Petra Artifact Set Circlet Lore states that Zhongli has had to kill someone close to him before in order to fulfill a contract. From the memories of Dust Lore, we understand that Zhongli was next to Guizhong when she died. Given that she spoke her last words surrounded by glazed lilies, Guizhong had also died in Guili Plains, which is her and Zhongli's home. This is what made me first curious about Guizhong's death. Zhongli and Guizhong lived, ruled, and fought together all throughout their friendship. Why would Zhongli, arguably the strongest archon in existence during the war, not have protected his best friend? Soraya herself, during the Treasure Lost Treasure Found quest, comments twice on how odd Guizhong's circumstances of death were. She first states that nothing, natural or otherwise, should have been able to bring down a civilization that two gods were watching over. She muses that the cause of this disaster must have been beyond the gods' powers to withstand, making me think that it couldn't just have been another battle with another god. Later in the quest, she again notes that she doesn't think any god would have been foolish enough to try and take on the two gods at once. In terms of narrative design, Genshin Impact has done a phenomenal job and it just seemed to stand out to me that Soraya mentions twice that Guizhong's circumstances of death are kinda sus. Finally, the exact wording on the stone tablets about this fight is as follows. There they fought upon Guili Plains where black dust choked the heavens and a thousand rocks splintered. It does not mention other gods and the only two elements mentioned are Guizhong's dust and Zhongli's rocks. It's also worth noting that Guizhong's dust is described as black, which is a word that's been used to describe other corrupted entities in the game, such as Durin. We also learn from the recent Yaksha trailer video that many of the Yakshas uh, did end up getting corrupted and going insane due to the horrors that they had to face every day and in fact uh, actually turned on each other because of it. Finally, however, this is all just speculation. This is by no means confirmed by the lore and I encourage you to draw your own conclusions based on the evidence provided. Regardless of how Guizhong's demise came about, it's undeniable that her death and her life irreversibly changed Zhongli. During the Commission Geo Travel Diary, we learn about the various things that Rex Lapis has done for the people of Liyue Harbor after it was founded, meaning after Guizhong's death. According to the notes that we get from this quest, Zhongli taught the humans how to use fire, uh, visited their restaurants frequently to teach them about food, and of course created currency in the form of Mora to encourage trade among the humans. We also learn from his story quest that Zhongli taught the humans how to build houses. The lore of the Sands of Eon piece of the Archaic Petra artifact set also states that he was the one who taught the humans how to tell time and create clocks. So basically Zhongli really put his heart into helping the humans. And finally, of course, one of my personal favorite stories about him, Zhongli took his duty as the protector of Li Yue so seriously that when squid-like deep sea pests became a problem in the harbor, Zhongli personally went door to door and exterminated them by hand, to the point where he can't even stand the smell of seafood to this day. I don't like seafood. Just seeing it reminds me of that slimy texture and that scent that just won't wash off. As for why I hate it, it's a long story. So let's just say my memory is a little too good. In the present times, Zhongli has only warmed up to humans even more. He's taken up a job at the Wangsheng funeral parlor, and we see from his character tales video that he buys gifts for his co-workers and pays off medical debts for the common folk. We also learn from Xiang Ling's voice lines that he gives her cooking advice, from Xin Yan's voice lines that he listens to her music and actively tried to get her a gig at the funeral parlor. Um, he performs in plays to entertain children. He comes down every year to interact with the humans of Li Yue during the Rite of Dissension and guide them in terms of economic growth. And we also know from his 
character demo trailer that he does not want to fight anymore but will do so in order to protect the common folk. While there is no concrete evidence that Gui Zhong is the one who influenced this change in Zhongli from being the war god of war to the kind person we know today, we do know that Gui Zhong has had to beseech Zhongli to emphasize with the humans at least once based on memories of dust, and it definitely seems that Zhongli has heeded her words. If you've been reading any discussion about Gui Zhong, you're sure to have also found some mention of Ning Guang. It is a very popular fan theory that Ning Guang of the Qixing is in fact a reincarnation of Gui Zhong. There are a few reasons for this. We know that Memories of Dust, the 5 star catalyst to be Gui Zhong's gift to Zhongli, but Memories of Dust is also generally considered the best in slot weapon for DPS Ning Guang. Ning Guang uses glaze lilies as an ascension material. Glaze lilies are heavily associated with Gui Zhong and was where Zhong Li and Gui Zhong spent their first and last moments together. Thematically, Ning Guang and Gui Zhong are very similar characters. Ning Guang grew up in poverty and had to work extremely hard to stand on the same ground as the other Li Yue merchants. Gui Zhong was born weaker than the other gods and had to work to make up for it in terms of technique and intelligence. On that note, Ning Guang and Gui Zhong are both extremely intelligent. They're also adept engineers, seeing as Gui Zhong built the Gui Zhong Ballista and Ning Guang built the Jade Palace. Ning Guang's specialty dish is Morami. During the Li Yue Archon quest, when we go to Mount Aozang, we learn that Mora meat is one of the dishes that Gui Zhong, Zhong Li, and Cloud Retainer frequently ate together. Zhong Li has good things to say about most of Li Yue's denizens, except our favorite walnut, Hu Tao, but he seems especially fond of Ning Guang. Ning Guang is also associated with the phoenix, as seen with her tattoo and her name card. The phoenix is, as we know, a symbol of rebirth and reincarnation. Despite all of this, I am actually, believe it or not, not personally sold on this theory 100% and I've tried to leave it up to interpretation in all of my content. This is because I think that there is a lack of concrete evidence so far. However, I love this theory. Um, I love that essentially uh, Zhongli would have handed over the reins of Li Yue back to the spirit of its founding god Gui Zhong. There are some who dislike this theory because they believe that it takes away from the Li Yue Archon quest's underlying message, which is humans moving away from the gods. I believe, however, that even if Ning Guang is Gui Zhong reincarnate, she is still a human who fought, worked, and made massive sacrifices in order to get to where she is today and in order to defend Li Yue Harbor. Ning Guang being a reincarnate, at least in the eastern definition of reincarnation, of Gui Zhong has no effect on either Gui Zhong or Ning Guang's character other than to explain the resemblances between the two. Regardless of how you decide to interpret all the evidence given about Gui Zhong in game, it's undeniable that Gui Zhong was a massive part of Zhong Li's life during the Archon War. I believe that Zhong Li used to be a fierce warmongering brute who killed, tortured, and dismembered countless gods during the Archon War, but ended up finding love and friendship in a gentle but weak goddess who teased him for not understanding human emotions. He watched her die in the fields of glaze lilies that they named after themselves, possibly having had to kill her out of mercy. Zhong Li then spends the next millennia trying to understand the humans that Gui Zhang respected so much, trying to understand how it was to be so small, to be so full of fear, and so full of hope. To this day, he is still trying to understand Gui Zhang's last words and to solve the last puzzle that she left him. The story of Gui Zhang and Zhong Li is incredibly beautiful and understanding it fully is key to understanding Zhong Li himself as someone who learned to grow from overwhelming grief and trauma, who learned to be gentle with the humans that he used to not be able to understand, and who learned to value knowledge and wisdom over brute strength, 
because that's what Kui Jong taught him. And ultimately, as he steps down from his 6,000 year mantle as Rex Lapis, as he sets down millennia upon millennia of pain and responsibility and war, Zhongli does finally and truly learn what it means to be human. Lastly, I'd like to thank everyone for the incredible responses on my animations lately. I'm not sure how you guys are even finding me, but I have been absolutely blown away by how kind and generous you have been when your comments. And I deeply hope to be able to continue creating stories for your enjoyment in the future. And uh, just another huge thank you for watching my videos.